Hey, what's going on guys? Jurassic Productions here. And today I'm going to give you the story of how I got fired from my first job. Now I started working at this uh, small seafood chain called Long John Teabag. Now Long John Teabag, it didn't really have a good reputation in the town. It doesn't exactly even have a good reputation right now as a whole. But whenever I worked there for like five months, five to six months, I believe, you know, it was an okay experience. There were some customers, there were some Karens in there that I had to deal with, but you know, it was, you, it was all right. It was all right. I got money out of it. I got like 4,000 out of like the five months I was working there and you know, everything was great, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm talking about how I kind of messed up and how I got fired from that place. Now, one thing you got to realize about this particular uh, job, this particular building, is that the original manager, you know, the acting manager when I was working there, we're going to call her by your first name initial in, you know, do that thing in GTA where on the high they just call everybody by their initials. I'm just going to do that uh, if you guys don't mind. So in, she was the general manager of the store and... When it came to hiring people, she hired pretty much everybody in her whole family. I'm talking her son. I'm talking her daughter. I'm talking the daughter's cousin. Uh, her sister. Also working there. It just kind of made my eyes open up a little bit. Working fast food and retail alone. You know, I always recommend if you're going to work in that job, try to work there for like six months. That way you get yourself kind of a humbling experience. Try to get yourself an idea of what society really is like, uh, your first, uh, peek into the adult world of paying taxes and dying and just doing nothing else but that. So yeah, she pretty much hired her whole family except her husband. And I was one of the few people who, uh, weren't related and, you know, we still all got along. Now, one thing is that her daughter, and the cousin of that daughter, who we're going to call E and S, respectively, they were on the night shift, all right? In the night shift, uh, in the day shift, we kind of had this friendly rivalry, I guess you could call it that. Like, you know, the day shift would always uh, act a little bit better, not to toot my own horn or brag, but sometimes we'd just come in from night shift and the place would be an absolute mess and we'd, and we as day shifters would have to clean it up before having to open up the building. So, you know, we kind of had this friendly rivalry. Sometimes it was bad. Sometimes it was good, whatever. And sometimes those night shift people would come to help work on the day shift and vice versa. You know, that's just kind of how fast food does, you know, it doesn't really put you in a certain shift and you stick with that, you know, they just kind of throw you around wherever or at least that's what this building does because this building it it wasn't really managed employee side really that well now i had a couple of run-ins with some with e and s before now s i actually went to junior high with uh a few years before this story took place and we both had an art class together and you know she was nice she's she's still nice to this day if you know what i mean like she's smart in some other categories but she didn't even know how to like count change. I'm not even joking. She didn't know how to really count change. All right. She'd be able to get the quarters down because she knows that, you know, four quarters equals a dollar. But like, say if she was trying to get 63 cents for some change for this customer, she'd literally have to call in an adult in and she's about the same age as me, right? She's pretty much the same age as me. She'd have to call in an adult and have them do it you know, because she just didn't know. And, you know, I'm not one to say anything about people with like learning disabilities. I don't think she really had a learning disability. It's just that she just didn't know. Oh, you're being mean. Oh, you're being this and that to her. She's trying her best. Yeah, we'll see at the same time, if you're going to go into a fast food or retail job, you got to know how to, you know, count change. My birth mom, she lives in Brooklyn, right? And she's a bartender. So she actually has experience and even she told me, yeah, if you're going into one of those jobs, you got to know how to, you know, count change properly. If you were supposed to give 63 cents back to a customer, 
unless you were out of certain coins, you can't just uh, give them a whole bunch of dimes and then three pennies. You know what I mean? So, like I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to say anything bad about her. I was just saying she didn't really know how to count change, you know? And, you know, she did a few other things that were kind of annoying at times, but, you know, but S was not exactly my problem. My real problem was E, N's daughter, and my lord, when I say that she was, she was okay some days, but other days she was a little bit of a jerk. I'm not even going to lie. So the way that the building worked is that it usually throughout the day, it worked in waves instead of just the slow constant stream sometimes. Okay, so it'd be complete silence. Complete silence, you could hear a pin drop. And then it'd be one wave. Then it'd be complete silence again. Then it'd be another wave. Then it'd be silence again. You know, just that until your shift is over, right? So during those breaks, I would try to sweep and mop the whole area, like like mainly the dining area, you know, the big dining area, and then this small other dining area, because this was a merger restaurant, you know, it was Long John Tea Bags and some other one, and I'd have to sweep and mop both places. And so during one of these moments of silence, I was sweeping the place up, right? I'd sweep first and then I'd mop later. Uh, I'd ask E, hey, to kind of quicken things up uh and you know we may get another random wave of people sometime soon you mind getting me the uh mop bucket ready so that way whenever i'm done sweeping i can immediately go to it tell me why this girl is sitting on like one of the benches on her phone now mind you i was on my phone a couple times during work too i'll admit it but dang it whenever some someone comes in i put that crap down and i go ahead and take their order you know what i mean i don't just stay on the phone 24 7 you know i still try to work but then she's sitting there on the phone even after i said the magic word you know hey could you please do this she's like i'll think about it and like this weird sarcastic voice that just kind of ticked me off right so that's something you know she didn't help me out uh whatever you know so one day i came in and i was talking about night shift with this person you know we were good friends we're gonna call her uh lauren so i was talking to lauren about all this night shift stuff right and the assistant manager who i was also good friends with um i kind of noticed her like looking at me as I'm talking about this and you know looking back in kind of retrospective the stuff I was saying was not exactly the nicest thing in general but when Lauren was listening to me you know she actually understood what I, I was coming from you know I didn't hate E and S at all uh E was a little bit of a jerk and S was uh she didn't really seem to get it yet you know what I mean? I didn't exactly hate him with my guts, you know, but I guess uh, the assistant manager took me took that as me saying that. And then because a few seconds later, I get a call from in and, you know, instead of being professional, you know, instead of being professional about it all, instead, instantly I hear I hear you're talking. Sh hmm? Is that you? Why are you talking crap about my family? Why are you talking crap about them? Like, not even, like, uh, saying, why are you talking crap about my employees or your co-workers? She literally said, you know, why are you crap talking my family? And that was kind of a big eyebrow raiser, if you know what I mean. So, after, like, a little bit of back and forth, I was just like, okay, you want to let me go because of that? Okay, that's fine. And I was actually planning to bring this up to end, but, you know, thinking about the way that she was acting during that phone call, I was like, you know what, it probably isn't worth it. You know what I mean? She'd probably fire me right there in that particular situation, too. So, you know, it's probably best, you know, that it was just this phone call and that was it. So I just uh, dropped my hat and then I left and I never went back there again until the area supervisor, who is actually one of the nicest people in that group, uh, we're gonna call him R, 
he invited me to, you know, come over. He was acting as a manager as they actually fired him because she was losing so much money in that building somehow. So they actually fired her for losing so much money. Uh, and R pretty much took over. He said, why don't you come on by? We kind of improved some things. And I actually did take up on his offer and the food was actually like really good. You know, I served, I sometimes served lukewarm food. I ain't going to lie. You know, I'm, I'm ashamed of it, but you know, it was a job. I was trying to make some money. So, you know, uh, that ended up, uh, so it all ended kind of on a good note. You know, karma was served. I still feel bad, but you know, at the same time, that's just something that it's kind of hard to avoid. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to figure out a solution to that problem in some cases. Uh, remember, do as I say, not as I do. And if you do have some sort of problem with nepotism or something very similar to that, uh, actually bring it up. You know, it, they may fire you in that exact same situation I was saying earlier. Or you could just get a phone call later. But either way, it's probably better to keep your dignity than, you know, to keep working in a toxic environment like that. So like I said, do as I say. Not as I do. Don't do it the way I did it uh, next time. Uh, it was better for me to get that phone call in that situation. But if you were there, if you're in a toxic work environment, just bring it up to, you know, corporate or, you know, even talk to the manager personally about it. They may cuss you out. They may uh, do, they may act a little bit weird, but, you know, if you guys can talk it out like normal people, then I'd say you're probably doing better than I ever did. So anyways, that's the story of how I got fired from my first job. It was kind of a crap show, but it actually ended up on a good note. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, the Last of Us Part 2 and Outsider's Perspective is coming soon. I'm still working on that. College has still been pretty much of a crap show. Uh, a lot of stuff has to be done, etc, etc. You know, so. I hope you guys have a good day. And cut. And just to add insult to injury, I still never got a pink slip from that very day.